Good evening, everybody. We got to do a couple things to this trailer. We got to haul some stuff tomorrow. And where'd that sucker go? We're going to install this sucker today. This is, well, for one, obviously, it's a jack handle. But then it's also a speed jack handle. Like the speed binders I have, it's the same thing, except for it goes up on here. And I'll show you guys how this sucker used to work. This. It's my dad's little gooseneck trailer. He doesn't haul it anymore. Uh, it actually is CDL required in California, so he doesn't have a CDL, so I haul it. Even with a single wheel truck, still requires CDL. But this is what came with it. You can see it's got a little notch guy. It goes in there over a dowel. Come on, baby. And this thing literally takes 100 cranks. These can drop down, obviously, like the standards, but it takes so many cranks. So what I have done, is let's get this thing out of the way is i made this guy just an old crappy 3 8 drive i don't even know what size socket that is a half inch it goes in there goes over the dowel and then i hop on it with an old makita by the way this makita i have this is my old gun it requires the little batteries but i put a five amp hour on this thing for all the people that were concerned with the speed binders the drill guns running out I use this a solid week, several, several toes a day, unload and load, and this battery was still strong. I charged it, but it's obviously I'm ready for the next week, so we're charged up now. But, super fast, but when you start to get under load, it's a little bit too much of a load for it. So I'm gonna try and rig this speed binder, speed jack up on there. I think I have to make a similar situation thing, and uh, hopefully this will go on there, and if my drill gun is dead i will still have you know your standard rotational jack and it'll be fixed it won't be like this little thing hey uh you see this thing's bent a guy driving up the highway lost his tire off his truck knocked over dad's fence and bent this thing it was completely 90 but straightened it out a little bit to use it so let's get this thing on there then we got to run up to dad's and put some new tires on his dodge a little long-winded Two threads. <laughs> that one's got three. See how that guy goes in there, flips over that. And actually, it wasn't even deep enough to get on there. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, what do you know? She was working somehow, didn't fall off. All right, so I think I came up with a plan. This was my original piece right here you can see I notched it real quick with a uh, probably that Makita grinder right there so I'm gonna do the same to this one they're the same this sucker should stick out there and uh, notch it and then drill a hole in this side so I can run the bolt and this bad boy should be somewhat in action so we got to get that sucker rolling but look at the shop I kind of got it organized it's not what I'm wanting but it's difficult when you move into a place. That's probably the hardest thing about having uh, your own building, your own shop is, well, if you're working somewhere else, when you uh, get close to the end of the day, you kind of burn a little bit of time getting the shop all organized back up for the next day. So, you know, you're kind of taking it easy, not really working the last half hour of the day. But when you got your own place, you're just, you'll crank it to midnight because it's your own project. You ain't worried. But uh, that bites you in the butt by the time you're done. Oh, come on, buddy. I don't have a center punch. So what I want to do with this place is, well, it's difficult, like I said, to keep it organized because it's just one project after another. And there's some projects just be sitting in here while, hey, Piper. Ugh while you bring in another project so it's empty ish right now but over here i want to make that kind of a welding area but i need to get these shelves 
transplanted somewhere else. Need to get my toolboxes up here because you're always working out of the front of the truck next to the cooler. And I got my toolbox back here, so I'm all kinds of backwards. So it's uh, it hasn't really been ideal. So let's see here. Let's test this side. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Definitely the hardest thing though is to keep the sucker clean. Uh, the bit didn't last. <whistles> Fuck it. See what that does. Well, okay. That was just a shit. Okay, good deal. That one works. Uh oh. There it is. So it's 14 millimeter socket for both my speed binders and this thing, so. drill gun in second gear and that is a curl really like this idea I really do but the trailers that I have are just not really suited for it very well because this one's already got a really low gear ratio in it having that gearbox dropping it down and then it's spreading to two jacks it's just straight running the drill gun into it like I had it through this, like being not bad, except for it just kind of heats the gun up for a little bit, but the gun doesn't, I mean, I'm not doing it for hours. It's doing it for, you know, 30 seconds at a time. So it's almost just right with that, but it's geared down so much with this guy. Uh, I don't know. Need it. If it went like straight into that jack, that could that could maybe be the ticket. I don't know. I don't know if that thing's got an option for that. So as for now, we're just gonna ditch this idea because uh, I tried this on my bigger gooseneck. If you guys didn't see that video, and it didn't uh, <laughs> it didn't drop down the gear ratio enough. The gun didn't have enough in it to lift up a 10,000 pound gooseneck trailer. Go figure. But anyway, we gave her a shot. We're gonna run up to Dad's and change those tires for them and then bring back the uh 12 000 pound excavator real quick so because we're working down the road from my house tomorrow so it'll be easier for me to get it tonight let's go oh there you are come on yeah you got a fuse in it oh fuse. that'll be kind of nice might save us next time huh yep. You should probably order another one. Well, you should order another one. Talk about a struggle bus. Holy crap. Alrighty, guys. So, Andy picked up Dad four new tires for his Dodge, and he swapped out one for his spare. So, I'm going to go ahead and just change the spare right now for you guys. Uh, these 16s are real, real cake for changing. First thing you do is release all the pressure. Oh, right in the face.
Jeez, that thing's taking its time. This old tire machine, somebody was gonna throw it away and my uncle snagged it up. Nothing fancy, but man, she gets her done. Get that nice and tight. Come on, baby. Got a lever down there. Come on, baby. I don't see my, I normally got a bar over here. We're just kind of, get off there, buddy. Repositioner. that joker out of the way I don't know this is laying here so I'm not gonna go get any uh, what do you call it soapy water I'm gonna spray her now oh we gotta spray her a little bit right there same pedal Damn it. She's a little rusty. Oh. So you could take this to a tire shop. I take my tires and wheels off my 5500 to a tire shop because they're those Alcoas. Oh boy, scuffed him last time, but he was cool. He let me know and he was gonna, said he would remember me on the next one, which I got four new tires for the back drives on my truck that need to be done. Oh, there we go. Get rid of that guy. Throw this thing back down here. I think you fell. Ah, ah they got water in it. Freaking rained like a month ago and it still got water. something something go ahead and pop these off we got the tire balancers on the other side of this little building man I don't know damn that one's been on there for a minute Come on. takes a little bit of time oh, watch out. Mitchell Okay, <laughs> freaking quarter answer. All right, give her a little how you doing. Yeah. Well, I couldn't find my freaking tire iron, but I found that thing. That thing got it done. All right, give it a little bit more how you doing juice. I used this crap last time because I was in a hurry. Didn't have any trouble. Yeah. And you put this joker on there. Come on, baby. It's got a couple of springs in there. And, uh, or it might be broken. Pretty much only use this to change the tires on dad's truck because it's got the 16s and then um, trailer. He's only got one trailer now with 16s on it, so it doesn't get used a lot. Now we gotta air this bird up. Oh, we got a fancy, fancy rig. Let's see how she does. Son of a bitch. Not gonna want to go, is she? Actually, I got a thing that I could shoot this thing now.
What the hell? Oh, where's the black one at? What's this old guy? The black trigger one. Oh, Watch this thing, it'll probably work. No, nope. all right, let's try it on here. Clean some of that crap out. It's all full of water. Somebody made this tank. Found it, so I figured I'd try it. What? Yeah, give me that one. That's the one I was looking for. I mean, nice, the nice last, the second gen model. 20 PSI, how much you think I should put in her? I never used this thing yet. This one that Craig made? Yeah. You ready to start filling that thing? No. Yeah. <laughs> this thing sucks. We have to put a crap load of PSI in there. I'd rather just shoot it with the freaking fire. Alright, you son of a gun. Get on there. Getting those tires on the bead with the uh, old flamethrower brake clean action is fun. If it works the first time past that, you're just getting mad. But I know somebody else could do it. We're not qualified, but nobody else is open right now at, uh, I don't know, what is it? Seven something? On a Sunday evening. I had fun. Well, be nice if this thing fit all the way in here, but I think it'd be about four feet short, even if I moved all the toolboxes on the back wall. But uh, this goes to show you simple jobs are not always so simple. I thought I had a loose wire up here on one of these uh, crimps for the pack brake. Uh, what's going on is I was losing my exhaust brake coming down the hill, and that kind of sucks uh, towing a 12,000 pound excavator behind a single wheel 3500. It's not dangerous, but uh, here's what happens. So you got your solenoid magnet charges, activates this thing over here, and what's going on is I was losing exhaust brake because i thought the compressor was turning off which it was and uh <laughs> it was pumping enough to where it got hot and uh stopped working so i had to do this before the solenoid goes on the outside of this and it charges when you want to turn on the exhaust brake come on light turn on there we go this little guy is the valve for it right here so when it turns on the exhaust brake this thing goes chink and lets this air passage go through here. But if this thing isn't pushing hard enough, it won't build more than 120 PSI. Uh, it regulates at 135 PSI. So what I had to do before, I'm lucky I know, or I've done this before, almost looks like you could flip this thing over. Nah, not quite. But the spring in here, just this little spring, all I did to fix this before Mind you, I changed the compressor out and everything. I did a lot of troubleshooting before I found out what the problem was. So what I did is I just took this little spring, took this little spring, and all I did was open her up. Now that's been like a year and a half ago that I did that, and it just now started acting up. Luckily, I bumped the compressor enough times to where it fired back up and it's working, but it still it wasn't building up enough pressure. So we got to uh, put this sucker back together. Little guy, that guy goes up there. I sprayed a little WD in there to give her a little liquid courage. But yeah, it just... Just a little rubber in the end there. And then it... I don't know if you guys can even see inside there. GoPro shut off screen. But just a little nipple. That's all it is. Something simple is never the case. Never the freaking case. What did I do with... Oh, you're using my crisp. Remember how I couldn't find a, a tire iron earlier? 
GoPro's magnetized to one right now. All right, tighten this sucker back down, reinstall it, see if that works. And then I wanted to talk to the talk about this trailer to you guys before we ended. In the Look at this guy. See his tail lights? That is 100% blocking both of my driveways there. Huh, all right. Might have to go snap a neck. 100 feet up there on your left. Yeah. That guy's asking for the directions. Let's see, well. Oh, dang it, I dropped a nut again. Oh, guess what? I didn't make it to the ground. Son of a. Well, let's try that again and hopefully not drop it. It landed in between the belt and a pulley. So if I would have fired up the engine, it could have got funny. Come on, start. Okay, let's see if that fixed it. Now the compressor doesn't want to turn back on again. I don't know what the hell. Sounds like it's running fine. Back ground or something maybe. Oh, it beat 120, 130. Ha 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 ha. Gauge might be a little. Uh oh. What's it going down? Crap. Well, we'll see if it fire back up. Oh, son of a gun. <laughs> 60 pounds in the bags. Still been fired up. Man, what a night. One simple task turns into something not so simple. Let's gather these tools. I think I'm hoping I have it fixed right now, boys. I say that right now because I don't really want to switch this thing over to 5500 tonight so I can tow tomorrow. I guess I could tow without an exhaust brake, but it really sucks. So, like I said, pressure regulated 135 psi, and if that little valve right there isn't seating properly, it maxes out to about 120. Uh, that's exactly the way I saw it before. Did the same, same exact thing. But if it's not building up the pressure enough to turn the regulator to send, tell a signal to say, hey, stop compressing, that little compressor just sits there and turns red hot. And uh, I mean, it, I guess it could get real dangerous for your truck's um, life <laughs> or anybody driving it. So that's something you don't really want to consider. But I think we're back up and running right now. Simple task aside. Let's put my tools away and I'll double check it of course before I leave and if I notice it is staying on I'll just get out and pull the relay on it that way no juice no chance of doing any harm but let's talk about this setup right here uh, I really like having the single wheel 3500 for towing the smaller stuff like this it's a 12,000 pound excavator it's not really the smallest rig 17.5 trailer tires here Nice little package. I like it a lot. I want to talk about the torsion axles because somebody had a question on it and I realized I never really addressed that. Uh, this thing does have the torsions under it and what that basically means, it doesn't have spring leaf axle suspension. Uh, it just got torsion tubes in there. Good and bad, I guess the pro of it would be the fact, I don't know, maybe get a lower ride height out of it, I think, maybe. But you can see what's going on right here. That tire looks like it's low on pressure, and this one looks like it's fine. They both 16-ply tires. They have 100 PSI in each of them. What's going on, if you don't have uh, an equalizer in the center like you would have with your spring leaf axle, or suspension rather, this axle back here is just taking a lot more of the workload because there's nothing to transfer the load up here. It's almost like a rigid suspension more or less there's a little bit of give it's not very smooth riding down the road when the trailer's empty or even loaded for that matter i don't i'm not really the biggest fan <laughs> coming to realize as i'm talking about it but reason why that one's 
squatting so much is because the trailer's doing a little bit of a wheelie. I got the bags a little high because I was messing with them, uh, trying to run the compressor. But I have the adjustment one notch higher than normal or what would be, you know, proper for this truck. But I have my new 3500. It doesn't really clear the bed rails as well because at 3500, it, the butt sticks way up in the air on it. So rather than switching it every time I use this truck, which pretty much I should probably just lower it for it. But my point being is the trailer is kind of doing a wheelie and it's, it's showing it in the axles. It's showing it in the tire. It's making it squat on the back one. It's not getting hot or anything. It's doing just fine, but it's obviously taking a lot more of the weight. So that's my opinion on the uh, torsions. I'd probably rather have the spring leafs underneath there. Having the goosenecks nice for this small setup because I could put the loader arm, the loader bucket up there with the wheel tractors and, uh, it, you know, rather than float it in the air or something because it's only a 16 foot trailer. But that is with the trailer and the excavator, that's like a 16, 17,000 pound load behind this. It does it good. Without an exhaust brake, it really sucks. Talk about these rails. Man, I'm just, I'm very much love hate more hating on the rails because I left the rails in there because I have the, like the kingpin assembly thing for towing a big, uh, what do you call it? Like an RV camper type thing. And I didn't want to have a truck that didn't have it. And this is my only one that has the rails. So it's got the only one that's got an option to tow one of those things. I just didn't want to delete it, so I got this adapter for a gooseneck ball in there. It's okay. It's it's seeming to it's wearing itself out a little bit. It's a Kurt 25K. I welded some on the ears that go into the rails. I welded them a little thicker, so you know they're tapered to fit in there tight, and it seems to be getting loose. And oh, brother, I I just if anybody's got uh, you know somebody that works at uh, you know flatbed department they got a line on somebody that can make something happen for me i'd really like to get a flatbed for this i'll probably even buy another one at while i'm at it to put on grandma's truck because if i have more time maybe this winter i'll build them but if anybody came up with a sweet deal on something i would definitely like to swing at a couple flatbeds to put on here but anyway guys testament behind the scenes action there's a lot more going on and it just seems to keep adding up every day there's more and more bs uh it's behind the scenes stuff that really i think really counts really builds your character and builds your business because there's just as many hours it seems like getting ready for the job as there is working the job so man efficiency maybe newer stuff i guarantee my new 3500 wouldn't be giving me this crap <laughs> better not Anyway, guys, comment below what you guys think of those torsions. And comment below if you guys have ever used the old fire action on airing up them tires or getting them to set on the beads. You know, safety third, all seriousness aside. Have a good day. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Hit them buttons for me. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Later on, guys. See you.